everyone, it's Carrie TV, and this is how to win part two. We talked about part one last week. If you didn't watch it, here's the info here, but make sure you tune in today for part two of how to win, how to win in a multiple offer market, how to get the home that you want. We are here to help you on Carrie TV. All right, so we were talking about the steps up to getting your offer accepted in today's ultra, ultra competitive market. And if you haven't tuned in before, this is Carrie TV. I'm sure you've seen it, obviously. But we talk about all the ins and outs and ups and downs of Los Angeles real estate, but mostly the behind the scenes information, not the stuff you're reading in the paper, real life situations and happenings that are going on. So let me know what you think. And if there's any other topics you wanna hear about, I am all ears. So to continue, people are throwing in everything, including their dog, their timeshares, into their offers these days to get into a home. We listed a home last week and we had 42 showings booked within two days. 11 offers have already come in on the property and the marketing hasn't even fully hit the press. We are still getting the virtual tour loaded. So today it's really important to talk about the tactics that go behind getting the winning bid. And after that, you've got negotiations and inspections and hey, it is insane out there. So let me go through some items that'll give you as a buyer the upper hand in this market. Now, outside of the sweet talking and wheeling and dealing, the most vital part is the structure of your offer. There are eight points, I'm gonna go through the today, yep, eight, buckle up, that talk about really strengthening your offer. And these are things that we use all the time on the Carrie White team to make sure our buyers get their bid in. Most good agents do these as well. So what do all these things have in common? Well, they are limiting the likelihood of cancellation and a renegotiation from a buyer. As you move through escrow, there are several opportunities for a buyer to renegotiate on a transaction. These days, the sellers are leaning towards buyers who are removing as many of these little hurdles up front as possible. Number one, offer over asking price. Well, yeah, that's just how the market is. How much over is really the question. Number two, offer cash. Yep, cash is king. More than 36% of homes are selling right now in LA from cash buyers, and a large majority that are loans are selling without any loan or appraisal contingencies. Yes, a seller is looking at the easiest transaction and not dealing with a bank or underwriters, vendors, appraisal delays, makes life a lot easier. A cash buyer has more control, whereas financed offers are always subject to a third party making decision. Cash does not rely on an appraisal and can close as fast as three days. So as a seller, isn't that more attractive? The average days for a cash transaction is honestly about 10 days though, FYI. Number three, waive or shorten your contingencies. Similar to a cash offer, the smaller the window of default and cancellation options, the better. These days in 2021, we are seeing finance deals being structured as cash offers, as I just mentioned, where they have an appraisal or loan contingency, even though they are getting one, they have it removed. Why? Because they aren't afraid of, of obtaining their loan and they want to appeal like cash. So remember, cash is king, never forget that. And if you aren't cash, we can make you look like cash with these these options above, limiting or waiving the contingencies. Now, if you're not waiving these contingencies and you are financing, speak with your lender about how fast they can move on these contingencies. Some great lenders now can fast track your entire loan, put you through underwriting, and you can write with a contingency in about seven days. And that lines up with the average physical inspection contingency. So everything gets done within the first seven days, then you can close probably in the standard 30 days, but your offer is shaped like a cash offer and it's well received by the seller. So the other contingency to look at is the inspection contingency. The standard used to be 17 days for this inspection contingency down to about 12 or 10, down to seven. Now we're seeing most offers come through with a five day physical inspection. Now this isn't just your home inspection, this has to deal with all the seller disclosures, condo docs, all the city reports, everything you need to investigate when it comes to the physical um, and back history of the property. So we are seeing people waive their appraisal, shorten their loan and shorten their physical contingency if they can't waive them all together at all if they're cash. Are people waiving their inspection contingency too? Actually, in places like Northern California, San Francisco, and Seattle, yes, people are waiving all contingencies up front to get into homes. 
So consider yourselves lucky, Angelinos. Fourth item for making your offer stronger is increasing the deposit. So normally the deposit is 3% per standard. Some places they don't always offer 3%, but in LA, almost every single offer we see when we write is 3%. What you can do is you can increase your deposit to five or even 10% to make your offer that much stronger. Now keep in mind that 3% deposit is what is held up if there's mediation or arbitration. Even if you have an increased deposit to five to 10%, that will never be held liable in court if there are any disputes or issues. FYI, I've never had an issue of mediation or arbitration. I have always kept every buyer I've worked with deposit safe. Now, number five, increasing your down payment. This one's big. So even though you can buy a property with five or 10% down, which a lot of people do, when a seller's looking at a spread of offers, they look for people who are cash or have at least 20% down or more. That is the most common way that people buy homes. However, you don't need 20% down on a home. So a lot of people are getting into their homes right now and taking advantage of the market by doing less down. However, you want to show that you are putting as much down as possible. More down means less appraisal issues, means you're more well qualified. Now, once you are in escrow, as long as you are able to get the loan uh, with the down payment that you said, then you're good. So make sure you're fully qualified with that amount down that you're offering. But an offer that comes through when there's multiple offers and there's less than 20% down, they do not really get considered as much when there's multiples, unfortunately. So you wanna show as much as possible. All right, next point, shorten your escrow period. Most escrows are 30 days, but some lenders, if everybody has all their ducks in a row and people are moving quickly, they can close in 21 days. Now, of course, cash is king. A cash offer can close in seven days, 10 days, as fast as they want. But whatever you can do to shorten from that 30 days is good. Even if it's 25 days or 27 days, shortening your escrow time period means you're getting to the close faster which makes the seller happy because it eliminates the possibility of cancellation or renegotiation. The reasons why seller like a short escrow period is because time is the enemy when you're in escrow. Anything can happen. The sky could fall, people could lose their jobs, tragic things could happen that could stop a deal from closing. So the shorter escrow period, the better for a seller. Time is not your friend when you are in escrow on either side. Rate locks, think, moving trucks, 30 days notice. So shorter escrows are definitely ideal. Seventh one, seller inclusion exclusions. This is a really small one, but goes a long way. Find out what the seller wants, what they're keeping, what they're not keeping. Maybe they want you to buy the playhouse. Maybe they want you to take the washer dryer. Maybe they wanna keep their beautiful new fridge. Who knows? But find out if the seller needs a rent back or anything is important to them because those those small things actually sweeten the deal more than you think. Number eight, my favorite, of course, go the extra mile. Never be afraid to deliver an offer in person or send some flowers or wine. I like champagne. Um, I've definitely sent offers over with cookies before. The personal touch in these situations is crucial. As much as it's a business transaction, it's also a human-based industry. A little bit goes a long way. Remember, at the end of the day, when you're getting into your little 30-day marriage, everyone's on the same team. The buyer's trying to buy, the seller's trying to sell, the agents are trying to help. Anybody who acts the opposite makes things very inconvenient. So sweeten the deal, go the extra mile, show everybody that you wanna work hard and you're going to make it an easy transaction. These may seem like very simple, innocuous things, but I'm telling you, they make a world of difference. At the end of the day, people wanna work with people that they like. So the buyer's a strong buyer, writing a clean, strong offer, short contingencies, large down payment, or cash with a great agent, they're likely to get the deal done. So those are just a casual, quick eight ways to strengthen your offer. I know, did you make it through it? But I'm telling you, there's even more things than these eight. There are more ways that we make our offer strong. If you need some help, I'm always around. Give me a call. I can give you some insight into what else we do. And thank you for watching. Let me know about your multiple offer situation. Are you in one? Do you have more questions? Uh, but we've been in multiple offers for years, as I've mentioned, and we are very good at getting them done. So we will see you next week on Carry TV. Make sure you like because I put a lot of work into getting you all this information. All right guys, stay tuned, see you next week.